All right. I'd like to welcome everyone to our first virtual council meeting. Uh, at this time, we will all rise and pledge to allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and to the republic, to the republic for, which for which it stands, one nation, one nation with God, 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 indivisible, indivisible liberty, liberty, and justice and for all. all. All right, that didn't sound too smooth. Am I on a delay? Because it didn't sound like I was saying it with everyone. Uh, no, I think we were all off. Okay. <laughs> All right, just for the record, uh, Councilman uh, Dufresne will not be with us this evening. At this time, we'll have personal appeals part one. If you have a personal appeal, um, at this time, Shane, our borough manager, will unmute everyone. And if you want to have a public appeal, please state your name, where you're from, uh, by stating your address and make your appeal. You have five minutes for appeal. All right, so everybody is At this time, would anyone like to make an appeal? Anybody? Everybody's okay. just here to watch then. So we're gonna, right. we're gonna uh, hold on a second, Brent. I'm gonna mute everybody again, and then I will unmute council members again, okay? Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, you should be good. All right, next on the agenda is a community minute. Does anybody have uh, something to bring forward? I would imagine not since nothing is going on at this time. Hearing none, we have no special presentations. We have the reading of the minutes next. Uh, council meeting minutes from March 16th. Does anybody wanna make an, a motion to approve the meeting minutes? Councilman Hart, seconded by Councilwoman McManaman. Uh, any corrections or additions to the minutes? I had one correction. The last page said the adjournment had seven eyes. There are only six people on council who were here. Yep. So we have, right, made, well, we have made that change on the official set, um, but we'd still like you to um, vote with that, with that uh, change. All right, so with that, Add it into the motion. Does anybody else have anything? All those in favor say aye or aye. aye. Those opposed aye. say no. There are six ayes. Decisions on bids. We have the sale of East Minor Street properties. Um, you have, I believe, 18 pages in your iPad in regards to this. Uh, we have the Senate seven generations charter school that made a bid on it for 33 east minor street and also 10 east minor street which is across the street the bid for the properties was three million four hundred thousand and seventy seven dollars um would somebody like to make a motion to accept the bid councilman hart seconded by councilman anders discussion um, yes uh, mr. Uh, mr hart has i'd like to I'd like to amend my motion, please. Sure. I'd like to uh, move that the uh, we approve the bid from uh, seven generation in the amount of 3.4 million plus seven, as you said, with the provision that Borough honors mm -hmm. section 19 of the agreement to allow the buyer to transfer the rights of the purchase of the property if they so choose. That's my motion. All right. There's a. Uh, uh Amendment to the motion. Uh, who made the motion? Me. Um, and who set, made the second? I did. Do you uh, amend your second? I amend. Okay. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are six ayes. On our communications, we have a letter. <laughs> or an event form from Richard Farmer for the 1803 house. They had an event that was scheduled for May. 
It's going to get moved to August. I believe it's called the Goblets and Games event. I believe they had it uh, in the past. So this will just go to staff. We received a letter from a Jeffrey Bertain from Emmaus requesting appointment to the Board of Health. From what I understand, um, he is scheduled for an interview. That's true. And then um, we received a letter from a S Sue Strader for the Flag Day Association uh, program, the Flag Day program. And this is something that's a yearly event, so that will go to staff also. Uh, did anyone else have a communication that they want to bring forward? I did receive an email from a Kenneth Havanko asking about the compost center. I uh, uh, adjust his email and I will update him after our meeting. So um, hearing no other communications, um, I don't know if our borough engineer is with us or not. Is he with us, Shane? Uh, let me take a look. I don't. I don't see him on here. I mean, you know, if people use their first name, it's kind of hard for me to, it's kind of hard for me to tell, but I, I don't see his name on, on here. Right. So we have no engineer's report, solicitor's, re solicitor's report. So Jeff, you, uh, you still with us, buddy? There is a Jeff showing. So I, I think that Jeff is having trouble with his audio. Um, well, it's showing that it's muted. Can yeah, but it's not. I, I've to? I've clicked on mute a, a bunch of times for him, so um, I, I think he's just not dialed into the to the right number. Do you want to quick call him and just do we need to have him? I don't think he has a, a report per se today. Um, okay. Good enough. I'm gonna. Then we move on. Then we move on to unfinished business part one. We have ordinance number eleven ninety eight. It's an ordinance amending chapter 15, subsection 404.1 of the codified ordinances, setting parking restrictions at certain times on a portion of Arch Street. We had our first reading um, March 16th. This is our second reading. And uh, would somebody like to make a motion to approve ordinance 1198? I'll make a motion. Councilwoman Here. McManaman, seconded by Councilman Hart. Any discussion? It's a roll call vote. Councilman Valiot. Aye. Councilman Hart. Aye. Councilman Anders. Aye. Councilwoman McManaman. Aye. Councilwoman Baumgartner. Aye. Councilman Laidenberg. Aye. There are six ayes. We have ordinance 1199. An ordinance amending chapter 15 subsection 303 of the codified ordinances setting Height restrictions and restricting tractor trailer traffic on portions of South 2nd Street and South 10th Street. Uh, same as the other one, we had our first reading March 16th, and this is our second reading. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 1199? Councilman Balliot, seconded by Councilman Anders. As you remember, this is to prevent uh, trucks from going underneath our train underpass, the bridge on 2nd Street and, and uh, 10th Street, South 2nd and South 10th to prevent it from uh, causing damage or, or actually taking it out. So with that being said, does anybody else have anything else to say about the uh, ordinance? There's also a roll call vote. Councilman Balliot? Aye. John, uh, Councilman Hart? Aye. Councilman Anders? Aye. Councilwoman McManaman? Aye. Councilwoman Baumgartner? Aye. Councilman Leyberg? Aye. There are six ayes. We have no new business. There unfinished business part two, we have nothing. Items not on the agenda, does anybody have anything to bring forward? Hearing none, Mayor's report. Thank you, good evening everyone. Um, as you've known, I have uh, issued three emergency proclamations um, in reference to the COVID-19 and on your iPad this evening is number three and I'd ask that council take official action um, and actually vote on that to extend it. So I don't have to continue to issue three and four after that. So um, what I'd also like to do is to stress the importance of following the guidelines established by CDC to fight the spread of this virus. The more that we follow their guidelines, the sooner we will see some and everything will get back to the way it used to be, however that was. 
But um, I also want to thank our emergency personnel. Um, they are the ones on the front line. They're the defense that we have on this, on this pandemic. And uh, I think they're doing an excellent job. So I'd just like to thank them. And uh, everybody stay home, stay safe, stay healthy. Other than that, progress. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Moving on to committee reports. Public Works Committee Chairman Anders. Nothing for official action this evening. Our meeting is Wednesday at 4 p.m. Which will be a virtual meeting that anybody in the public can sign on just like they are for this meeting. Health Sanitation and Codes Committee, Chairman Balliot. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, for tonight, we're gonna have uh, resolution number 2020-14. It is for the conditional approval for the townhouses in South Mountain. Uh, with that, I'm not sure who's going to give us a presentation tonight, but we'll uh, we'll let them start. Yeah. So um, first and foremost, since uh, we're having trouble with audio from our borough solicitor, I'll give you kind of a, a recap, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up to uh, we have Tom Walsh, uh, Billy Wall, um, and uh, uh, Attorney Joe Buba uh, representing the developer. So I'm going to unmute all three of them right now. Um, so uh, Tom Walsh and um, Bill Wall, looks like Bill is on. Okay, all right, so we've unmuted, we've unmuted all three of them. Um, so essentially what this is, you've already approved the Towns of South Mountain project on one occasion. Um, they came back to us with an amended plan uh, that essentially changes just a couple things, uh, but we felt that those changes were significant enough that I need to go back in front of uh, the planning commission and then ultimately in front of borough council. And so in short, uh, what I'll tell you is um, uh, they went from one car garages to two car garages, which is something that both council members and planning commission members wanted to see. But it, so, so it obviously increases the size of the houses. Um, it also increases the size of the driveway. So there's more off street parking rather than on street parking, which was a concern. Um, and then the final thing was, uh, we had said from the beginning, our, our engineer had commented from the beginning that uh, uh, while it was commendable, they definitely over-designed their stormwater facility. Um, and uh, so what they've done is they've redesigned it. Uh, it's going to essentially, we're not going to notice a difference. It's going to hold the same amount of water. Um, but what they did was they got rid of some of the bells and whistles that their original engineer uh, had over-designed with, which results in a major savings for them. Uh, our engineer felt that the new the new design was was actually better than the old design, uh, and it actually addressed things that we had previously commented on. Um, so with that, um, I know that Mr. Buba will be the one that wants to talk first. So uh, Joe, if you're there, uh, we'll hand it over to you. I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so thank you, Mr. Pepe. Um, what I will say is. I, I want to start by saying what we didn't change. There's still 49 lots. There's still a recreational trail located exactly where it has been. Um, and the stormwater detention ponds are exactly where they are. The driveway, the, the roadways are all exactly where they are. And as um, Mr. Pepe just indicated, uh, this all really was generated by a change um, in, in the stormwater design of the basins, not the functionality. And um, so if you looked at the plan that's in front of you now, if you have that, and looked at the old plan, you probably would not even see a change. But there is a change, and um, we're here simply to um, have that modified plan approved. We have a zoning memo for Farnsworth dated March 4th, I believe, and the township engineer memo dated March 6th. We have the LVPC approval letter March 21st, if I'm not mistaken. And we have planning commission's unanimous approval from two weeks. So with that said, um, uh, we, all three of us can answer questions, but um, we just simply propose approval um, that revised plan and I have already sent uh, this solicitor revisions to the improvement agreement 
which both reflect this supplemental approval and also attach the improvements for, for the uh, improvements, primarily storm water and the, the driveway. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Buba? Hearing none, uh, is there someone else is speaking, Shane? No? Shane is not at his desk. Interesting. <laughs> you have anything you need to add? It's possible he might be talking, trying to get in touch with our, our solicitor. Um, is there anyone else that wants to present anything? Is it just you, Mr. Buba? I just asked if Bill and Tom can hear me. If, if there's no, can you add anything? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you. I am gonna um, just walk away for one second. The, the door's open and there's people in the hallway, and I just want to make sure that you guys can't hear that. All right. Sorry about that. All right. Is Shane back yet? There he is. I am. Our, our borough solicitor is on my cell phone. Um, okay. He's obviously not going to be able to hear you. He's definitely having trouble with the audio. Um, but if we need any advice from him, yeah, if, if we need any advice from him, he's on the other end of my phone. Well, while you were gone, Mr. Buba uh, presented what, what some of the changes were. Okay. So, so, so Shane, at this point, is there something that our solicitor would like to say about this? Uh, so, so Mr. Solicitor, do you have anything you want to share about the uh, Towns of South Mountain changes? Mr. Buba had already uh, gone through the changes that they're, they're proposing. Uh, are there any legal concerns that you have or, or anything council needs to be aware of? Everybody heard that? Yeah. Yes. I mean, the last part was that it looks good to him. Yes. All right. So at this point, are we ready to uh, make a motion for resolution 2020-14? Councilman Hart, is there a second? Councilman Balliot, any questions on this? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are six ayes. Right. So motion passed. Thank you. Resolution passes. Thank you, Shane. I'm going to get off. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, council Thank you. members. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. We're still on the health sanitation and codes uh, committee report. Chairman Balliot. Uh, you're going to see our committee notes from. Uh, the last meeting we had uh, and stuff in your in your packet. Uh, with that, our next meeting will be uh, April April 29th at 4:30. It will be uh, uh, one of these Zoom conferences. All can attend, and with that, I'll report progress. Thank you, Parks and Recreation Committee Chairwoman Baumgartner. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have not met since our last meeting. We will be meeting tomorrow at 4.45 again via Zoom. Um, the information should be posted about that. Um, we'll be talking about the park study and, you know, thinking about the summer, how things have been affected, um, playgrounds as well. So that'll be tomorrow um, at 4.45, report progress. Thank you. Public Safety Committee, Chairman Hart. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we did not have a meeting since the last council meeting. We have one scheduled for the uh, for the 13th. I have two uh, items of business that need your action. I'll take them together unless there are any objections. There are two individuals in the fire department being recommended by Chief Price to be promoted to lieutenant. 
both of them have extensive uh, experience. The first being uh, Mr. Troy Robb, who's had 28 years in fire service with 21 years on Emmaus uh, Fire Department. Uh, he also served in uh, Coopersburg and was lieutenant for four years and captain two years and chief for three years. The other individual is an Emmaus boy. He uh, <clears throat> uh, spent some time with us in public works in the early 80s in the fire department for four years in 84 to 88. And then he took a full-time job with the city of Allentown uh, from 88 to 2011, which he retired from. He served as captain and lieutenant uh, in the Allentown uh, Fire Department. Eminently qualified individuals, I'd recommend their appointment. There's a motion by Councilman Hart. Is there a second? Councilman Balliot, any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are six ayes. That's all I have for business before this body. As I mentioned, the next meeting is April 13th at 9.15 a.m. It will be a virtual meeting. I report progress. Thank you. General Administration Committee is myself. Um, we have resolution 2020-12, disposal of municipal records. If you click on uh, your tab on this, um, there's three pages of just miscellaneous documents from the past. From what I could tell, they, they go anywhere from 1959 all the way up to, looks like the early 90s. Most of them are 70s and 80s. Um, I'll read the resolution and I'll ask for a motion to approve it. A resolution in accordance with the Municipal Rec Records Act of January 18, 1968 as approved for local government records by the Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission Bureau of Archives and History as approved by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania on December 18, 2008 and amended July 23, 2009, authorizing the borough of Emmaus to dispose of certain municipal records. Would somebody like to approve resolution 2020-12? Councilwoman Baumgartner, a second it by Councilwoman McManaman, any discussion? Shane, how many boxes does this equal? Oh, not, not as many as I would wish. Uh, we've actually, you know, when you, when you do physically come back in the building, uh, I would encourage you to go down in the basement and it, it looks completely different now. Um, we found a lot of pretty cool stuff. There's a lot more of the 1959 like sewer stuff that we found. We found old ordinances, old ordinance books that were like the handwritten from the early 1900s, late 1800s that were just sitting in boxes um, rather than being up, you know, in the safe where they belong. Um, but I would say probably uh, in this case, probably 15 boxes of stuff went. Uh, we're, uh, we're just about through everything, uh, believe it or not. And uh, uh, the public works department has been very helpful with uh, moving some things, building shelving units, doing, you know, making it look like it's supposed to. We actually took um, the five rooms of stuff that the commissions took over our basement with and moved them to their own isolated location where they'll be able to enter the building and go right to that room down the stairs rather than going through you know, all of our other stuff. Um, so we built shelving units there. Um, but in the meantime, you know, we've been going through, it, we, you, know, you literally have to go through one file at a time. Um, so uh, it, it takes a while, but we're, uh, we're getting there. So this one's probably about 15 boxes uh, we parted ways with. Thank you. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are six ayes. Next. Next is the proclamation. Is that the proclamation from the mayor or is this from the council? So, so no, that's, that's the mayor's proclamation. What we want you to do is vote on the resolution underneath of it. Oh, so I don't need to read the proclamation. No. No, just uh, the uh, resolution 2020-15. Yes. All right. Resolution 2020-15, emergency proclamation regarding community spread of COVID-19. Do you need the whole thing read? It's three pages. Uh, no, that's that that's, covers it. That's yeah, that's fine. Unless you really right. want to read it. I mean, no, I do not. 
if I have to read that, I'd rather read the proclamation. That's only one page. Well, it's, right. well essentially, it, it, it is the it is the proclamation. Just that uh, um, it extends it to um, to the point of either council votes to disband the proclamation, um, or the end of the state of emergency through the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I think is is how okay. it reads. All right. So, would somebody like to approve resolution two thousand twenty dash fifteen? So moved. Councilman Hart, seconded by. I'll second. Councilman Anders. Um, questions? Um, I know you just said, I thought you said 20, 20, 15, but isn't that 20, 20, 4, 7, 9? No, it's the one below it, Roy. We're, we don't have to vote on the proclamation. We're only voting on the resolution. Okay. Sorry. No, that's fine. All those in favor say aye. 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 As opposed, say no. There are six ayes. And then below that, we have resolution 2020-16. That's the CDBD grant application. Um, approving the application to Lehigh County and the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for Community Development Block Grant Funds. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve resolution 2020-16? So moved. Councilwoman Baumgart, um, McManaman, seconded by Councilman Anders. Um, this is the uh, the grant money that we get every year to do our, our curb cuts for the handicap. Can you repeat who made the motion again in the second? Uh, Councilwoman uh, McManaman is seconded by Councilman Anders. Thank you. You're welcome. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. There are six ayes. Next, we have Jasper Ridge Temporary Water Agreement. Um, as you know, there's a, a development going in Upper Milford and we provide the water, which once it leaves the borough, it is actually LCA, but we're providing the water. And basically, this is just an agreement to uh, extend for, it's temporarily, uh, temporary, and I believe it goes through the end of this year, Shane? Uh, yeah, so what I'd like to do um, uh, is uh, let uh, Attorney Demick kind of fill you in on the agreement for the uh, the temporary water hookup. Uh, we wrote this agreement. Um, very, it's very strongly worded um, because, quite honestly, we're not crazy about them being on our water system when we don't want them on there long. Um, because you know, as you as you know, you just approved the towns of South Mountain, and that same well is where that development is going to draw water from. Um, so. When we design this agreement, because we're obligated to do, um, uh, to give LCA a certain amount of water on a temporary basis. Um, so most of that, most of that development already has the water. We're talking about, you know, some more units, but uh, we want them off by the end of the year. Uh, so our solicitors have been working with our engineer, uh, as well as LCA uh, and uh, uh, the developer to work on agreement that uh, was very strongly worded and, and we get financially compensated. Um, but I want, I want uh, Attorney Dimmick, if you could uh, just kind of elaborate on that, uh, I'd appreciate it. I'll be glad to, can they hear me at this point? Can you put it a little closer, Shane, to the speaker? It just sounds distant. Yeah, ho hold on just a second. Okay. Go ahead. with the engineer and I've reviewed it several times. Uh, basically, it's a carrot and a stick agreement. It's going to force K or the um, or LCA to extend their lines, which were supposed to be extended by mid, well, July 2018. So things have been going on a long time. So what, we're, what this is doing, th there are several components to the connection fee. And one of the components of it is a capital recovery fee. And these fees have now changed beginning this year. So basically what's happening is that they uh, are going to pay, have to pay us upon signing this agreement, the capital recovery portion for the 44 homes that are already hooked up. All new connections will, uh, which are going to be, uh, I believe, townhomes, but they will, uh, they will now use the new capital recovery fee of $1,111.11. Uh, 
11 cents. And they're supposed to complete this by the end of the year. If they complete the connection, they get their one third back of all of the money. So they're going to be basically paying us $24,444.64 when they sign this agreement. Plus, any new connections will be billed for the capital recovery fee portion of the uh, hookup fee. Uh, so, and if they do it and timely do it, they get a third of that money back. The other two thirds we get to keep. After that date, then they have to pay us for all, all everything is under the new system and they have a, uh, the new numbers and they then also have a penalty that kicks in on March 31, 2021. And it's a 10% penalty on all past and future connections, which is billed quarterly. So there, it is very strongly worded to encourage them strongly from an economic standpoint to finish the work that they had promised to do by July of 2018. They're a little late. Does anyone have questions? And they can for you, Shane. Okay. Right. Are there any questions for the solicitor? Shane, my only question, and I see in number six, the portion of it for damage, is it just all cost or um, if, if, say, they charge the system and it would, say, blow back or do something to our piping, um, that all damages would be covered from them incurring that, correct? Basically, under number six, where it says damages to IWS. Yeah, so, so Jeff, uh, the question from Mr. Anders uh, is um, under, under provision six, if they cause any damage to our system, kind of like, um, you know, when the fire company uh, um, from the township uh, was doing, you know, water testing over there and they caused, uh, what, $25,000 of damage, uh, we billed them and they had to pay it. Uh, not the fire company, but LCA and uh, the, the developer. So the question is, is, Provision six provides for them to uh, reimburse us for all damages. Is that correct? That is correct. And I think we'd have damages if we can't hook up the, um, uh, the uh, what are, what's it called, the new plan here, uh, uh, the one you just approved. That may, uh, we need to have that water. So we may very well be able to, uh, to, to include that. But the answer, a simple answer is yes. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have anything or a question for the solicitor? All right, hearing none. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve the temporary water agreement with Jasper Ridge? Anybody? Councilman Anders, seconded by Councilwoman McManaman. Any more questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are six ayes. Uh, that concludes my agenda for general administration. Our next meeting is this, this Thursday at 9 a.m. and we will be doing a virtual uh, meeting. So if anyone wants to participate in the public, you can go on the website and click on uh budget and finance committee chairman Dufresne is not here and chairman or um councilman hart will give a report in his absence thank you mr president first item for consideration is resolution 2020-13 it's uh payment of bills the bill list for this month was five hundred and fifty one thousand ninety eight dollars and sixty three cents along with payroll expenses of $165,363.57, plus taxes 52,919.23, for a grand total of $769,381.43. Uh, I didn't see anything out of the ordinary on the, on the bill list, so I would put that in a motion for approval. There's a motion by Councilman Hart. Is there a second? Councilman Balliot, any questions or discussion on the bill list? All those, approve, or, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those, 
opposed say no. There are six ayes. All right, we have uh, two communications that the uh, <clears throat> that were considered by the uh, Budget and Finance Committee. The first one from Robert Oberly from 830 Frank Drive, Emmaus. Mr. Oberly makes the uh, case that he never received uh, a uh, bill for his uh, uh, his taxes. Uh, this involved his moving, and um, and uh, he was assessed one hundred and thirty eight dollars and forty one cents uh, uh, penalty as a result of of not paying it. What occurred uh, was something with the um, U.S. Postal Service that they did not forward his um, his information as as they should. Um, while this is a very rare and unusual situation where people ask a waiver of this, uh, we believe that he was uh, caught in a situation where he had no remedy, i.e. he never received his tax bill. He paid his bill immediately upon receipt of, of, uh, of this, and we're recommending waiver of the $138.41. I put that in the form of a motion. A motion by Councilman Hart. Is there a second? Councilwoman McManaman, discussion? I, I'd just like to make a couple comments uh, just real quick. Um, first and foremost, uh, so, so the law is very clear. Um, you don't have to waive this, okay? Um, you know, the law says that it's the responsibility of the property owner to know that they receive a tax bill every year. At the same time, um, our solicitor had advised me of that today. He would say that if it's a little easier for him to communicate here. Um, but secondly, um, in cases like this, one of the things that we do do uh, is we go back and we look to see if there's any consistency. You know, has this guy paid late in the past? Has he, you know, um, has he ever been assessed penalties before? Have we ever dealt with him late on any kinds of utility bills? And the answer is no. Um, you know, our records show that he's always stayed in the discount period with everything. Um, so, uh, and, and I had expressed that to the budget and finance committee during the conversation. Um, and, and I believe, and, and Mr. Hart, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that that's part of what weighed on, on your decision, uh, as a committee is that, uh, uh, this gentleman uh, and his family have always paid their bills on time. And given that, uh, you know, he did move and he actually found the latest, the late bill by accident because he ran into the person that owns the home now when he was in McCungie visiting, I believe. He didn't even get the, right. uh, the late bill notice. Uh, correct. I'm correct when I say that, right? I mean, that's what, that's, that's what correct. he told us. It was multiple flux going on uh, that added to our belief that he did, in fact, not receive the bill and it was not his fault. Appreciating the fact that everyone should know that they're getting a tax bill uh, we feel in this situation that we should forgive the uh, penalty. Yes, and with that being said, I just want to also tell you what I brought up during the meeting is that since I've been on council, there have been other people that, not many, a handful, that have brought forward asking for a waiver on, on a penalty because they said they didn't receive a bill. And I can tell you in the past, we have always denied that waiver for paying the penalty. Um, we felt that this is different than other situations. And with that being said, I'm only voting yes for this because of those, those specific circumstances. So with that being said, does anybody else have a comment? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are six ayes. Our next item has to do with a business um, a business privilege tax of a Mr. Bob Arnold. Mr. Arnold, uh, I know he gives uh, lessons on the piano because he taught my one daughter and uh, he also repairs uh, pianos. His case is that he does not have a business sign out front. Uh, however, he does admit to being in the uh, yellow pages. Um, he um, feels as though it's uh, 
uh, a burden for him to do that, that he's not really a business business, if you will. The committee recommended uh, no waiver. So as a result, uh, you do not have something before you uh, unless someone may, wants to make a motion to overturn our recommendation. That is correct. And then just for the record, uh, we have never granted a waiver for somebody that actually has a business, no matter how much they make. Um, it's the fact that they're doing the business from home and they're required to pay it. So, um, so if nobody has a motion to actually grant the waiver, we will move to the next item. Next item uh, has to deal with uh, library funding, uh, which segues into the last item. And that is uh, as a result of the numerous uh, cutbacks that we're making as a result of coronavirus uh, issue, uh, we are taking a hard look and the finance committee took a hard look at a number of, of things that we can either do without or suspend temporarily, et cetera, in order to uh, keep cash flow appropriate for us to carry out business. Um, it, one of those issues is the library. There's a $9,000 per month donation to the library and the committee and the library is closed. And the committee, the committee voted to uh, defer the April payment of $9,000 uh, to the library with the proviso that we may defer further months if the library should remain uh, close but would uh, uh, reinstitute it uh, should the library open. I'll put that in the form of a motion. So motion by Councilman Hart um, is deferred a proper term to use or because defer implies that we're going to give it at a later date. Well, so, so the conversation at the committee level um, was that we would vote to defer for now um, simply because we don't want to outright say we're canceling uh, the payment because if uh, what the committee decided was if for some reason we have the funds or we have discussions with the library um, and council decides that yes indeed you know we, we do want to give the library the payment uh, it gives us the option of of giving them the, the so the essentially hold. we're just putting a hold on it and then and then if we need to we're gonna not give it to them that was yeah that's how the committee had had voted okay Correct. so there is a motion is there a, is there a second You guys are being really slow with the motions tonight. Councilman Balliot, uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are six ayes. Lastly, uh, and just to uh, fill the committee in, you received in your a packet a document that is still in the works that uh, Shane uh, and his directors uh, put together with regard to steps that uh, are either being taken or will be considered to be taken as we get further into the coronavirus. There's three, three levels, level one, level two, and level three. Um, without getting into the detail of it, because this is not a final document, we will be reviewing this on Thursday. Uh, to, to put a final blessing on it, but wanted to let you know that some of these uh, actions uh, have already taken place as a result of uh, either not hiring part-time people for the summer, laying off part-time people at the present time, and delaying some of the uh, uh, projects that were scheduled to, uh, uh, to go into effect at the, uh, at the uh, present time. And I also, uh, we're not hiring people for open slots uh, if if possible. So that, that are the preliminary ones. It gets into more depth uh, as you get into level two and level three, uh, as you might imagine. And that would be depending on how long we're going to be uh, uh, in this particular status. Shane, do you want to say anything? Um, yeah, so I will, uh, I'll just uh, kind of elaborate a little bit. I mean, just like with the library donation deferment, that's not something we want to do. Um, however, you know, as I said, um, you know, we're getting at a point where we are losing a lot of money um, just in, in uh, sustaining our ambulance, for example, 911 calls are down. Um, uh, 
you know, uh, earned income tax, you know, as people are, are sitting at home, unfortunately not, not working there, you know, there's no income tax. So, um, you know, we're, we're getting hit financially the same way that, that, you know, every, every other business is. So we need to make sure that we're making the cuts rather than just simply saying, we'll just tax you more at the end of the year. Um, so we're making a lot of hard decisions here. Um, you know, with the library, for example, uh, you know, by deferring, by deferring that payment, um, you know, that amount of money is the equivalent of, of three full-time secretaries for a month of their salary. Uh, so when you look at it in, in that perspective, um, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to look at it from, uh, um, not from an emotional standpoint, unfortunately, but, but from a business aspect. So there, there's a lot of things that are in that document and it's a confidential document at this point um, that the department managers worked really hard and, and made some really tough recommendations. Um, you know, and, and it cuts across the board in every department. Um, and we're hoping that we don't get to phase three. Um, you know, we're, we're really hoping that, that, you know, the phase one measures that we're, we're looking at is, is as far as we need to go, but uh, we're preparing, you know, all the way to, you know, uh, uh, from, from minor things to drastic things, uh, just like every other business, you know, is, is forced to do, uh, and our households are forced to do. Um, you know, our operation is, is, is really no different. Uh, given though that we have services that we need to continue to provide, you know, um, you know, we, we definitely have to provide, you know, those necessary services to our citizens. Um, but I think that uh, the measures that we've proposed uh, will continue to provide those, uh, those important services that are vital um, without sacrificing, you know, when, when you call 911 that the fire ambulance uh, or police department, you know, they're still coming. Um, so uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of hard decision-making that, that I'm hoping you're not going to be forced to make, but uh, we've got to at least be prepared. That's been hard. Uh, unless there are further questions, uh, I'll be, uh, report that our next meeting is on the 9th at 11 AM and report progress. Thank you. Community Relations Planning and Development Committee, Chairwoman McManaman. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, nothing for official action this evening. Um, our next meeting will be a virtual meeting on April 13th at 4.30. I report progress. Thank you. Um, I don't know if our junior council member is actually participating. Does anybody know if Jonah's on, on with us? Shane, do you know? Uh, I don't, I don't see him on the, on the list. Um, okay. I mean, if he dialed in from a cell phone or something, uh, I, I wouldn't know that. All right. I'm, I'm in. <laughs> hey. All right. So after a uh, junior council members report, we have, uh, three sets of various boards and commission meeting, uh, minutes and reports. Uh, personal appeals part two. Does anybody out there have a personal appeal? Our borough manager will unmute you. If somebody wants to make an appeal or a comment, please state your name and your address where you're from, and then yeah, I see. you I can see. make an appeal. Before we do, we can. Hello. Can you hear us? Yes. Hi. This is Lynn Dauntis. And your We're address. Not on the we're just on the phone. And your address, Lynn? 559 Minor. Thank you. And your appeal? Um, the uh, first name of the new fire uh, person was given, but not the second. The fire lieutenant, Troy Robb was mentioned, but the second name, and I wondered who that was. Uh, give me oh, one we're, we're sorry. It's, it's Thomas Carl. Okay. And then... Um, I was wondering about the archival things. Are there uh, materials that could be donated to the Historical Society or scanned for posterity? Is that considered? So, so yeah, uh, Ms. Donchess, the, the things that we got rid of um, are, are documents that they will not be interested in. We have a whole set of other documents that we set aside just for them to go through. Um, a lot of documents. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the first five or six times that we've gone through stuff uh, in the past, uh, we've set boxes aside for the Historical Society to come through and take a look at and see what they wanted to keep. So yeah, so we're doing that. 
Um, I have some really cool sewer stuff uh, from 1959 when we when we first designed the sewer um, mm -hmm. that they might uh, uh, they definitely might uh, be interested in. So yeah, but these these documents that we're looking at are, I mean, for some reason the borough kept things like secretary notes and 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 just like like department manager files and we threw them in boxes um or we kept duplicates of hundreds and hundreds of files for some reason um so these aren't most of these aren't records first of all they're they're not records that we have to keep um but the ones for historical reasons uh we have we have more important um historically significant documents that uh, they would be more interested in Good. That's good to hear. I'm glad they're um, I'm glad they're getting a chance to look at them. And lastly, about the Jasper Ridge, um, just wondering if um, that would cause if something that they would do would cause us to go over the limit. Would they then have to pay for the overage of those costs? For for this, it's just water. It's not in reference to uh, sewer at all. Correct, Shane. Uh, that's correct, Mr. Dimmick. Uh, can you unmute yourself? Okay, the, the answer to that is it is just water and uh, I, the only thing that it could affect are, is the availability of extra water for the townhouse development. Okay. The new one that was just approved here. Um, the uh, LLC towns at South Mountain. Other than that, I see no problem. And we would, we would certainly have recourse economically against them. You know how much they'll use? Uh, well, the the EDUs are actually stated on here for a um, for a home. I believe it is three twenty. Shane, do you recall what the EDU amount is? Yeah, I think it's three twenty. I think it's three twenty, as I recall. So it's just a matter of how many they hook up. Okay, and no water is going down the sewer lines. No, no. Okay. Thank you. Sure. You're welcome. And thank you for the meeting. Um, we didn't do the computer part, but we know what you all look like, and it was just um, it's just great to be able to participate. Thank you. Well, and we're hoping uh, you know this is our first first one of the big meeting, and it seems like it's going pretty smooth. I think. Um, so we're hoping that we don't have to have a whole lot of these that we're going to be able to meet you know fairly soon uh, physically again. But uh, until then, I, I think I think we'll be okay doing this. All right, do we have any other public appeals uh, out there from the public? If so, um, just speak up and state your name. Hearing none, you'll mute them now, Shane? Yep, give me just a second. I will mute everyone. Uh, and then I will come back through and unmute you. We'll keep chat muted. <laughs> all right so you're all you're all unmuted again um all right all right so borough manager's report yes yeah, so i mean you guys know um there's there's a lot going on uh, a lot of different directions with uh with the budget impact issues um, <coughs> but uh, i, I want to speak more to um you know, our response to the COVID-19. I mean, obviously you're seeing some minor cuts in services, um, but uh, you know, my bigger focus right now is, you know, on the community as a whole and as well as on uh, our employees uh, and in particular, our emergency responders. And, and Mayor, thank you for that. I think our, our emergency team uh, is doing an awesome job. Um, you know, I know that there are constant procedures being put in place for protection of the community, uh, protection of, of our, our team members. We're scrambling to get supplies. You know, we just put a, an order for 2000 face masks out there because uh, you know, our EMS is, is, you know, only has a week or two of supplies on, on face masks. Uh, our police department doesn't have face masks. So we're, you know, we're, we're constantly trying to get as many supplies as, as we can for both patients uh, and our, our employees. Um, you know, understand that our, our EMS workers are working around the clock dealing with a lot of different patients. Uh, they're wearing the proper PPE. I think uh, Chief Hoffman 
Chief Miller and um, Chief Price, who looks like he's taking a nap on the on the video <laughs> there. Um, but I, I think they've really led the way for our entire operation uh, in working with you know all of our departments, including the police department, the public works department, and the rest of our staff to make sure um, you know that we're we're doing the the right things. Um, you know, we just ordered uh, you know uh, two different machines. Uh, one is a, a fogger machine that. Uh, essentially takes us uh, like, like the surgical antiseptic and and it's an electrostatic machine so that we can decontaminate our vehicles you know one thing you don't think about is uh, the fact that you know we take a sick patient in the back of an ambulance but they might be in the back of our police car too or in our holding cell um, or somewhere else in the building you, you just simply don't know um, our emergency services you know they can't just close the doors to the public like we're able to a town hall um, you know, they, they are out there um, every day. So, uh, you know, Chief Price, it, it seems like he's been uh, one step ahead, um, which has helped us, I think, stay on track um, with making sure that we're getting supplies, making sure that, uh, you know, procedures were in place before, uh, before the fact rather than after the fact. And I, I certainly appreciate those efforts. Um, you know, our, our, uh, uh, our operations, we've we've given the opportunity for people to work remotely or to change uh, change some hours, um, and uh, you know, and everybody's uh, you know everybody's coming in the work. Um, you know, we're we're making sure that we've put procedures in place uh, with the public. You know, where we've enacted uh, uh, you know additional drop areas uh, in the building for people to drop bills and and plans and things like that. Um, you know, and we're also looking at things uh, at budget and finance as far as, you know, withholding penalty fees, like red tag fees right now for sewer uh, and some other things, um, you know, trying to do our part to help our, our people in our community. Uh, you know, I'm real concerned about our small businesses. You know, how long can they sustain, um, you know, without, without being open? Um, you know, so it's a tough time for everyone. I think there's a lot of fear. I think there's, um, there's definitely an economic impact uh, and uh, you know, we're continuing, I think, to do what we can to uh, make sure that the town's protected, but also to try to alleviate as much of that impact as, as we can. Um, so I, I think overall, I'm very happy with the, the response that uh, our team members have, have made. Um, I'm hoping that we don't have to get into too many more, you know, real difficult decisions. Um, but, uh, you know, I think they're also prepared because one thing that our departments have done a really good job at is communicating with our team members as to what's going on, um, you know, where we see things, uh, what the potential, you know, and the possibilities are, um, uh, and to try to ease their state of mind too. Um, you know, our department managers, our sergeants, our lieutenants, our captains, you know, they're, they're in constant contact with their team members and we certainly appreciate uh, those efforts. Uh, we appreciate the fact that you've done your part of socially distancing uh, you know, out of the buildings. I know each of you have a key, but you've each stayed, you know, you've stayed away for the most part. And we, we definitely appreciate that as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, uh, I think that's enough for tonight. Um, Shane, did you uh, report your two items on your agenda yeah, and, there? I, and I apologize for that. Um, so we did, uh, uh, per the contract, uh, for the public works contract, uh, Jeffrey Kratz has met uh, all uh, requirements to become uh, classif classification number four. So we've we've promoted him per the contract to move up from level three to level four. Um, Jeff is a, uh, I think he's been here uh, one year now. Definitely a great asset, uh, future of the department. Um, very, very highly skilled um, and motivated individual. So we're happy to uh, uh, to congratulate him on his, on his promotion to level four. Uh, and we hired Joshua David as a part-time EMT. It, you know, it comes at a much needed time right now. Um, but Joshua uh, is uh, uh, qualified. Uh, you see my, um, my uh, memorandum on Joshua. He's a local resident. Um, you know, his ultimate goal is to be in emergency medicine. Um, you know, he, uh, he's been volunteering with us. Um, you know, and he's been an EMT since 2015. So we can certainly use him. Uh, he's also active in the National Guard. So, um, so uh, I'm very happy to announce that we've hired uh, Mr. David as an EMT within the Ambulance Corps. Now I'll report progress. 
Thank you, Shane. Uh, under President's Business, I just want to say that I'm really proud of everyone that's working for the borough and our leadership that we have. We have great leadership, and it all starts with Shane. As we know, he is the, the center of everything that goes on in this borough. And I, I greatly appreciate everything that he does, um, especially with like just putting these meetings together because that took a little research for him. It's something new that he was doing. And, and uh, like he said earlier, it, it seemed to go pretty smooth tonight. Now we did have a couple committee meetings as a, a trial, but not with this many people participating. So um, our department heads, I, I just feel that everybody in this borough that works, works for the borough takes a lot of pride in what they do. And, you know, they all have legitimate concerns and everybody is worried, you know, you don't want to take something home to your family. And, and you hear all these things out in, on TV every day. And uh, I just want to let you know, I'm, I'm just proud of everybody, including council members and uh, just all the work that everyone's doing and, and putting in. Also, um, when I sit in my living room, I've never seen so much activity in my neighborhood with walkers and dog walkers and bikers and people I've never seen before. I don't know about you, but people are out and about and it's just nice to see people are everywhere, really. I mean, they're doing things they can do. They can walk in the neighborhood. But um, with that being said, does anybody want to say anything with what's going on? Go ahead, Councilman Anders. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say that our residents are, are very awesome to each other. Um, if you, as you said, I've been doing a lot of walking. Actually, I lost about six pounds doing it. Um, but our residents, if you look at their windows, they have they have pictures, they have teddy bears, you know, there's rainbows. They're celebrating life and they're celebrating the borough and our residents are very resilient and I know they're gonna get through this. And you, if, even if you're out for your walk, a person, they make sure they go to the side or you go out to the side, keep your social distancing. And um, you know, the people are doing what they're supposed to here, but they're also celebrating the people in, in town and give them something to smile about. So our residents are great. And I just wanted to say that. Thank you, Councilman Anders. Anyone else want to say anything? If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Councilman Balliot, seconded by Councilman Hart. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Meeting adjourned at 8.05. Thank you. Good job, everyone. Have a Thank good night. Thank you, guys. Good night. Good night. Be well. Sorry, sorry, it took me a while to get on. <laughs> um, so if, there's, if there's anybody from the press that's present, um, can you? I, so I've unmuted everyone. Is there anybody in the uh, from the press that that is has joined? I saw meeting? Tara's out there. Yeah, I'm here. Tara, do you have any do you have any questions for me? Uh, if you want to call my cell phone, uh, you can oh. do that. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm okay. Um, I'm just impressed why with how well the meeting went because this went better than some of my work meetings right now. So you guys did a good job. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. And is anyone else from the media here? Okay. All right, everyone. Enjoy your evening. All right. Thanks Thank again. You. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.